Great. You can hear me all, all good, all right? All good. Awesome, James. Thank you so much. That's a very, very wonderful uh, uh, introduction. I am so happy that this is getting off the ground for a second year and that you've had such success. It's a, it's a really great forum to, for, for communicating these ideas and figuring out how we as designers and agencies and developers can make a difference in the future of our world. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about organization design um, and specifically about how we've implemented it at uh, Mighty Bytes um, and how we've kind of uh, woven and imbued sustainability into our core values as a company. Um, so Mighty Bytes uh, is a digital agency. We're located in Chicago, as James mentioned. Um, we uh, started in 1998, so we're almost 20 years old. Um, so we've seen a lot of things come and go, flash anyone. Um, and uh, we've kind of changed and mixed up our process uh, over and over and over. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Emily, whose last presentation was on, and I talk about process all the time, and uh, it's great to see things coming into uh, into play at her agency because uh, it's really a, our process is a big part of how we actually succeed as agencies. So uh, what we do, we do this stuff for companies like organizations like these, uh, some lots of nonprofits, some corporations, uh, some foundations, community foundations, uh, some civic clients as well. Um, and as uh, Emily mentioned earlier and, and James mentioned, uh, we are a B Corp. We are a proud member of the B Corp community. Uh, we've been a B Corp, a certified B Corp since 2011, um, which essentially means we undergo a rigorous assessment to make sure that we are using business as a force for good in the world. Um, so all B Corps align profit and purpose so that we're solving social and environmental uh, problems alongside making, making money. Um, the assessment that we go through is, is quite intimidating and it seems uh, we're, we're about to undergo our fourth uh, B Corp certification um, and it seems to be getting more and more difficult each time um, but the value far outweighs the effort um, because I, I think really more than anything I'm going to talk a lot about systems thinking and that was mentioned earlier a couple times in other presentations today um, it, it's a great reminder that there are things beyond just the pixels and things beyond just the, the just decisions we make on projects every day <clears throat> and really all of my thinking about all of this stuff came out of becoming a B Corp um, uh, there are a number of different questions about your supply chain and as an agency you don't have like a standard product company supply chain like suppliers who make widgets and 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 you know that kind of stuff so um, we really were were thinking that we were part of the problem until we started researching about the uh, environmental impact of the internet and then we're like well great let's be part of the solution and not part of the problem and so we really started thinking um, at a higher level about how we could imbue sustainability into everything we do so not only just like the standard stuff like 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 composting and recycling but also into our process into pretty much everything that we do um, so we are just one of literally hundreds of thousands of agencies according to agency spotter there are about 560,000 agencies worldwide 120,000 of those are in the United States um, they're not all digital agencies they could be PR firms and anything that kind of would fall under the agency uh, model but you know as one small company there isn't a lot that we can do but collectively you know if you even got half of the 560,000 agencies around the world making decisions about you know the the, the green host that they use and the design decisions that they choose and the efficiency of their operations and stuff um, there's a big difference that, that we could make we can make some significant change happen so um, that's what we opted to do and try to do and so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we uh, actually practice sustainability at Mighty Bytes um, and and talk a little bit about uh, standard companies and what they do as far for, for sustainability as well as how we're going to apply that idea to to an agency um, so again, I said since system thinking was mentioned several times today, um, for us it was really about considering the entire life cycle of a digital product or service and then not just not just the design process or not just whether or not we're using agile or agile methods or, or, or waterfall methods or you know the efficiency of our computers or, or any of that stuff. We really wanted to go look at everything. So in a standard like you know product 
based company or manufacturing company, they'll use like a business life cycle assessment where they will go through and they will assess a full circle, a closed loop, they call it, of the uh, all the inputs and outputs of the company. Um, so they'll look at materials and they'll look at manufacturing and they'll look at packaging and they'll look at distribution, usage and disposal. And they will literally assess all of the inputs where all of those materials are sourced, how far they have to go, basically the entire impact. Um, they measure the inputs, the outputs, and the, and the waste produced by all processes of the business um, and, and in this kind of circular manner, with the idea being that if you can get down to a zero waste, you're actually, uh, you know, you're doing really great on, on the environmental side of things. Um, so an example of like how we might apply that to an agency is, uh, uh, for instance, you know, the e-waste for one year is enough, uh, just in the United States alone, is enough to fill 1.5 million trucks full, like 18-wheeler trucks. You can actually fill 1.15 million of those, which is enough end-to-end -to, -end to put go, to go halfway around the world. Um, that's a lot of devices. Um, and well, maybe on the, for agencies, we don't necessarily uh, actually have anything to do with creating devices. We create software for devices. Um, so this is a thing that we can keep in mind as clients are asking us questions and 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 you know we can bring up in conversations to say hey you know there are bigger things to consider um, and that's just one example of them uh, overall for instance if you wanted to kind of apply the life cycle assessment to the virtual model uh, this is something uh, that was originally sourced from Pete Markowitz who did the VR uh, uh, pre-recorded VR presentation um, that uh, is on the sustainable UX site um, you know if you tried to take that same life cycle assessment process and apply it to what we do, um, you would be looking at the inputs and outputs and the waste produced by design and development and, and the amount of energy it takes to upload something to the internet um, as, and download it through the network, uh, what kind of interaction is happening, how much, how, how efficient is that, um, whether or not you are, are cleaning, keeping your servers clean and removing extra data, um, and then just in general the software and visual assets and all things that you use to, to, to create what we do. So we try to keep those things in mind uh, just over Overall, as we're running the business, um, you know, it's it's easy to 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 forget those if you're not keeping them front of mind, and so it's it's a it's a good thing to to kind of just remind ourselves on a pretty regular basis. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we've then in turn, you know, decided to apply this stuff um, by becoming a a B Corp. Uh, as a proud member of the B Corp community, um, we were able to look at the entire life cycle of our business and, and, and figure out everything that it produces, um, which helped us be more adept at systems thinking and help to think bigger picture, um, which then in turn, of course, uh, 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 in, informs any design thinking exercises that we do with our clients as well as internally, um, and, and, and help us to realize that everything that we produce is part of a larger or bigger system. Um, and so that helped us make sustainability kind of a key driver of everything that we do. Um, I would say before uh, kind of thinking through some of this stuff as a B Corp, um, a lot of what we did existed in silos. And there was a lot of that kind of, you know, waterfally toss things over the wall and, and, and you know, designers and de developers and, and, and everything that we did kind of, you know, was a step by step by step process. Now, and now it's a lot more collaborative and, and, and iterative, which we, we enjoy much better um, and is also more efficient. Uh, there are a lot of B Corp agencies uh, around. This is just some of them. The, the four across the top are actually, uh, you heard uh, Emily from Lime Red is the last presenter. Um, but those are all just in Chicago on B Corp Row. They're just, those are just the agencies, not the B Corps. We also have soap companies, Method Clean Products, um, and uh, other, other agencies and manufacturers. And KHE, one of the largest food natural foods distributors in the country, is actually here, located here. They're a B Corp. Um, but agencies are, there are a bunch of agencies uh, spread around the world, some of whom uh, have been presenting this year and last, uh, Open Concept and Man Overboard presented last year at Sustainable UX. Um, so these are great companies, definitely worth supporting if you're looking for help on digital products or projects. Um, and you should think about, if you're a business owner, you should think about uh, adding your name to this list because it's a really amazing community. Um, most of the people on this list uh, I speak to, if not regularly, um, uh, Man Overboard and uh, uh, to Andrew from Man Overboard and I have a weekly call, but on a pretty regular basis I talk with almost everybody on this list, which is great because it's super helpful to get uh, you know input on how other people are doing these kinds of things. <coughs> so. 
what we uh, use is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the B Impact Assessment is the tool that we use uh, to, it's a kind of our roadmap for building a better business. Um, and there's five categories, and each category has dozens of questions, and, and uh, you need to get 80 points in this assessment to become a B Corp. Um, and so each question in each of these sections of environment, workers, governance, community, and customers uh, are, are give you a certain amount of points. Um, and so you have to have 80 to become a certified B Corp, the ones that are in the top 10% actually get a Best for the World award. Um, so I'm going to go through just a few simple sample questions. So if this is something that you might want to consider for your own company, um, and again, agencies are what I'm talking about here because it's what I know, but this really applies across the board. Uh, B Corps run the gamut from Laureate Education, which was the uh, first B Corp to go IPO um, not too long ago. Uh, Method Cleaning Products, as I mentioned, Bet Bet Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, uh, a lot of names that you'll know. Um, those five categories I mentioned, they have each have questions. Uh, so some of the sample questions in the environment category, which for us was really what got us thinking about all of this sustainable UX stuff, is um, you know they were asking standard office questions like how do you track electricity use and do you conduct life cycle assessments on your product and services and do you offset your your use of of, of non renewable energy using like renewable energy credits or something, uh, and do you encourage your suppliers to audit their own impact? And so that really, like I said, got us thinking about our own supply chain which is essentially comprised of pixels and people and, and figuring out how we could be more sustainable in, in that. Then uh, in under workers section, uh, you know, again, there are more than four questions in each of these things on the B impact assessment. Uh, there are dozens under each section, but these are just kind of four random, random examples for each. Uh, do you pay a living wage to employees? Uh, what's the multiple between your highest and lowest paid workers? At Mighty Bites, we try to stay within uh, three times uh, that our highest paid workers never making any more than three times what our lowest paid worker is. Um, and we just kind of have that as a goal for the company. Um, and do you subsidize professional development anyway? Do you, in other words, do you actually let people attend things like Sustainable UX? Do you give them? Is there is there some sort of company budget for for professional development? Um, and do you have an employee handbook? Um, we didn't have one of those before. We we became a B Corp. We kind of had some Google Docs that had been, you know, kind of tossed around, but we didn't have an actual, like, you know, employee handbook that breaks down all of the things. And there's just clarity around expectations in that. Um, and and we'd been around for a long time, and it was just one of those things that we never actually, you know, qual qualified and put together. So. Underneath the governance category, really, this is about like open book management and and you know transparency. Uh, so figuring out if you have incorporated a commitment to social or environmental responsibility into your written corporate Michigan mission Michigan. I am from Michigan mission statement. Uh, we are a benefit corporation, which I, was not really applicable to this um, in that it's a longer conversation. But that means basically that we are a legal, our legal structure has a social and environmental mission built right into it. So if I were to sell Mighty Bites, that, that social and environmental mission needs to stay intact as part of the sale. One big thing that happens a lot in the mergers and acquisitions world is that companies will go in and they'll buy a company and they'll strip out all the sustainability and CSR and, and employee engagement tactics that companies have put together in order to increase efficiency um, and they won't really take the kind of triple bottom line of people planet and prosperity into mind they'll only be looking at finances uh, you know do you share basic financial information with your employees do you produce a report that details your mission related performance as a benefit corporation we legally have to produce a, a benefit report every year um, and so that just tells how good we've been at you know like similar to an annual report where you talk about financial performance this is literally just like this is how good we've we've acted on our on our uh, social and environmental performance. Um, and I mentioned, I, like I said, if we're a benefit corporation, so we've legally institutionalized our mission into our corporate structure. In the community section, um, you know, they ask you questions like, do you purchase goods and services from local and minority or women-owned suppliers? Do you create job opportunities for underserved communities? Do you offer paid volunteer community service time? Healthcare benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you have formal partnerships to support a local charity? So, uh, as James mentioned earlier, I'm on the board of Climate Ride. It's a strategic partnership for us. They provide job leads for us. We give them pro bono services. Um, it's a great back and forth strategic partnership as opposed to you know kind of a client vendor relationship. It's actually we work together to figure out how we can both raise each other up, how both organizations can raise each other up, and uh, that's a that's a common thing in the B Corp movement that you don't see, you may not see as much in, in other corporations. 
And then finally, there's a new category in the new version of the B Impact Assessment, uh, which is about customers, and it really is meant to track um, your uh, uh, your work with mission aligned customers. So you know, we do work with Allstate; they're an awesome client. We have a great relationship with them. You know, are they mission aligned with us? I wouldn't say that's necessarily the case, um, uh, but you know, we have a great relationship with them, and they help us. You know, they give us the resources to be able to support smaller organizations that may not have the the deep pockets that a company like that has. Um, and, and so that allows us to kind of make good on that mission of, of servicing customers who are, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, make a big difference in, in social justice and environmental stewardship. So uh, you can roll your own at beimpactassessment.net. Um, anyone can take the assessment for free. So uh, usually it's better to be doing it in terms of uh, uh, thinking about an organization. But even if you're a freelancer, you can use it to kind of assess your own impact and, and, and uh, measure what matters. Um, 50,000 people and companies use it already. Um, even though there are only 2,000 plus certified B Corps, uh, 50,000 people actually use this to measure, to measure their impact. Um, and and you can use it and not actually have to become a B Corp. So for us, it was really nice to have this kind of roadmap, this toolkit for building a better business. Um, it, it, it saved us a lot of work and trying to figure out like we want to be this certain kind of business or this certain kind of company. And lo and behold, there's, you know, someone who's actually done the, the legwork and, 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 and figured out, you know, a nice plan for you, which is really awesome. So. I want to, you know, mention that uh, this also takes a lot of resources. It's, it, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's, it's easy. Uh, Mighty Bytes started 20 years ago with me being a freelancer who got too busy. Um, I think a lot of small agencies start like that, um, and you know, you bring on other people to kind of, to, to, uh, uh, you know, help with what you may not necessarily be good at, and suddenly there's an agency there. Um, you know, operating like this with, with focusing on the triple bottom line requires resources. And without those resources, you know, you're not going to be able to accomplish a lot of this stuff. You might have to reduce benefits that you want to. You might have to let people go. You might have to make shifts in your procedures. Um, so it's really, you know, for all the reasons that Emily mentioned in her last presentation, it's easy for things to go off the rails. Um, you know, what we do is complicated. And, and so if you're not you know, aligning your organization's purpose with the systems for generating profits. Um, we've had some situations happen where where some of our projects have gone horribly over budget because of not paying attention to some of some of these things. So, so I, I just want to you know point out that. You, you need to have a clear mission and you need to make sure that everybody, as, as Emily said, it all starts with trust. Make sure that everybody's on board with what that mission is because it can be very easily when, when people are in the weeds for them to make decisions that may not necessarily be in the best bigger picture of, of the organization and what it stands for. So uh, we also wanted to uh, apply this to our process, to our actual, you know, the process of what Mighty Bytes does um, for creating digital products and services. Um, this probably is going to seem pretty basic to a lot of the folks in the office so, or in the audience, so I'll probably go pretty quickly through this. Um, but essentially, we identified, and this is really the basis of the book that, that James mentioned earlier that I wrote, uh, the two areas where the shifts where we needed to change our work was in the efficiency of the product and service itself and the processes that we use to make them, and then, of course, powering them by renewable energy. That was a big, big thing for us. So, um, you know, for, for findability, it's really about, like, how, how easy is it for users to find your content? How quickly can they get their answers, answers to what they need? How does their site perform in search engines? You know, can they find what they need? quickly, um, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a few suggestions for content strategy to help with that, making sure that you're answering questions with great content and clear calls to action, um, optimizing that content so that you're, 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 uh, you're performing well in search engines, um, you know, pre increasing your page and domain authority, uh, making navigation lab labels, like just simple usability stuff, uh, navigation and labels and, and, and content is clear and obvious. Uh, have a search on the site so that you people are actually able to find what they need by using the search field. And then, you know, we just saw an entire uh, presentation from Emily on streamlining processes. Uh, second one uh, of the four pillars that we found was usability. Um, the, the quick tips there were, you know, go mobile first, obviously responsive, um, you know, optimize your design assets, 
uh, we're big fans of making sure we are avoiding dark patterns. Darkpatterns.org is a great website. Uh, in fact, I wrote a blog, a blog post about green patterns, which is really helping users make more sustainable choices, which is the opposite of dark patterns. Um, but uh, darkpatterns.org is a great place to go look, look at what not to do. There's a lot of cautionary tales there. Uh, test your design decisions. We try to use a lot of A-B testing and split testing internally to make sure that what we're doing is, is, is in, you know, live user testing is, is being validated with, with what our assumptions are. Uh, and again, let lean agile workflows. Uh, and then we saw we saw a presentation earlier today on reducing technical debt. Uh, performance optimization is a, is a big uh, a way where we we are trying to keep our things lean as possible. Uh, last year, I believe one of the presenters talked about creating a page weight budget. Uh, so one thing you can do is create a page weight budget, stick to it. It can be easy for clients to be like, yeah, I want that image carousel, and yeah, I want that live video background, and I want this and that and the other thing. And if you have a page weight budget and you've defined that up front, you can just tell them, you know what, we're, we're, we're sticking with, you know, we want it, we have a goal of 800K per page or something like that, so we want to make sure that we're, we're sticking within that with, with everything. Um, you know, using performance guidelines that are outlined by Google and Yahoo, W3 web standards. Accessibility is a big thing, obviously. 20 plus percent of the population has some sort of disability. Uh, so making, at the very least in the United States, being 508 compliance, but really talking about like how you make your content more accessible um, is, a, is a big important part of all of this as well. Optimizing your files. Someone was talking earlier today about minifying JavaScript, et cetera, re reducing HTTP requests. And and again, I'm going to go back to the kind of lean, agile workflows and figuring out how collaboration can streamline processes. And finally, uh, green hosting. Uh, this is a big, long journey for us. Um, we went on a seven-year journey to find a, a, the really the right, journey, right green hosting provider. There are a ton of green hosts out there, hundreds and hundreds of them that all kind of, uh, you know, tout the virtues of, of, of green web hosting. But um, there are a lot of options and few unicorns. Uh, and in, in our case, we uh, worked with over a dozen, dozen and a half hosting companies, and we ended up dropping all of them. Um, mostly because not because they were they didn't couldn't prove they were powering their stuff their, their servers by renewable energy, but because they had bad customer service or or bad security or they had uh, you know uh, um, weren't their, their their sites weren't reliable the uptime was not not you know ninety nine point per something percent. Um, so we like you know kissed a lot of toads, and we finally actually landed on Google, um, because they are the largest non-utility investor of renewable energy on the planet. And if you look at this, which is from Greenpeace's uh, Click Clean report, they are head and shoulders, at least in North America, uh, beyond anybody else in terms of their investment in 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 uh, renewable energy so we decided to go with Google Cloud Platform we have been working with it for about a year now it's secure it's scalable they provide great service it's stable um, and and for us even though we would prefer I think conceptually to support the the, the little person and and their little the little company and and you know preferably local we just couldn't find anything that was able to offer the same kind of you know quality of service and 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 stability and then I, you know the final thing that I want to say here is uh, just do it um, in in our experience early on we really tried to sell the valid the, the, the kind of idea of, of sustainability as being this great bonus to add to your projects and you know most clients either don't understand what it means or they don't care that this is a thing and so we found the best solution was to just do it and roll this into our existing process and if they ask about you know we'll, we'll mention that you know things are powered by renewable energy we'll mention that they're most efficient but you know really for us it was just a matter about adjusting process getting it Im imbued into the everyday things that we do and 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 just doing it because the the sale message there people were a lot of they were they immediately became Became wary of like extra costs and, and stuff like that so we decided to make it invisible to clients um, and, they, and or otherwise they're just going to be obsessing about things uh, so I would say build these practices into your own agency if you can devise a plan and revisit the, the, your, your processes uh, get buy-in from whoever you need um, make a plan to improve and iterate make sure that you're communicating that I think that's a big big hurdle that a lot of agencies can can get stuck in kind of everybody sitting in front of their own computer and not communicating on a larger scale um, I, I know for certainly know that I'm guilty of that uh, take steps to 
to make change happen and assess the results of those steps. And uh, hopefully that will get you on the right path. Um, one last shameless plug, uh, I, this is the book that I wrote. Um, if you go to O'Reilly.com and you use the uh, code A-U-T-H-D, AUTHD, um, you can get a 40 to 50% discount on the book if it's something that you are interested in. So I think that's right around, I think I'm four minutes be four minutes under. So I'll, I'll give it a, a stop there and say thank you very much. Tim, thank you very much. That was, that, that was great. Thank, uh, hopefully that's encouraged a few people to think outside of a classic agency model and, and uh, a little bit more about you know, what, kind of, uh, what kind of ethical DNA their next career shift might have. Um, <laughs> have, you, have you got a sense for how much B Corpism, S Corps, that sort of thing are, are, are catching on in the agency world? Um, uh, you know, I think, I mean, I, I, Chicago is where we're, I'm probably a little biased because, you know, all of those agencies in Chicago are personal friends of mine. And so <laughs> it's easy when, you know, you know, a bunch of agency owners and you're like, oh, you should do this thing. But I think all of us are, you know, we're all thinking about like, how can we be a better company? And so when you find something that works, it's easy to kind of spread and evangelize the, 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 the process. Um, I know that there are a, a significant amount of, uh, of service based companies. There are more service-based companies in the B Corp movement than there are, are um, product-based companies. Uh, that being said, I don't know how many of them are actually agencies. Uh, it seems that there are a lot of them cropping up every day, which is, which is awesome. Um, I'm also thinking about the corporate. So this is definitely an agency point of view mm -hmm. talk. Now, all the big corporations in America uh, any any corporation where it salt's got uh, some sort of CSR type presence. How right. have you got any tips for people going into to that world for assessing the quality of the claims that those corporations are making? Uh, you, you mentioned working with some big clients who, uh, you know, sometimes the values don't always align, but right, do a yeah. Job. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's many companies have historically, uh, you know, they take CSR, their corporate social responsibility, and they'll put it in a janitor's closet, and they're like, it's one person or maybe two, and they're like, here's your budget for the year, go. And they, 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 they're, because they're siloed away, it's so easy for that, comp that, that small CSR department to, to not really, you know, be able to, to imbue the idea of sustainability or social responsibility into the entire organization because they are so siloed. One great thing about the B Corp assessment is that it, you know, forces you to look at the entire company. It's not literally just like, you know, here's a pile of money, go, you know, go donate to a charity to make us look good. You mm -hmm. know, it's really, it's really about a much larger, um, much larger, broader picture of what a company can be. You know, right, thank you. Um, and uh, I'm afraid that's it for, for time for questions. Um, so I'm just going to so say much. thank you very much again for joining us a second in a row. Always. Uh, if, we've, if we've got the strength for uh, <laughs> a, a third one of these, then I'm sure we'll uh, uh, be Excellent. inviting you to that one as well. I always enjoy your presentations. Thank you again very much, Tim. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Everyone should buy his book.